Glycosylation? What is that? And why should I care? Shazam! I am the biology genie, and I am here to tell you all about how glycosylated proteins are important to your everyday life. In fact, without glycosylated proteins like connectin, you would, your motor neurons would not form proper connections with your muscles, and you wouldn't be able to move. Oh no! Well... How do my cells make sure the proteins get glycosylated? Well, for that, we'll need my friend, the Fresh Prince of Glycosylation. Well, this is a story all about how my sugar groups got flipped upside down. I'd like to take a minute, just sit right there, and tell you how I became glycosylated. In the cytosol, born and raised on the ear membrane where I spent most of my days, chilling out, being translated through the membrane, all chilling with my four two residue precursors, when a couple of flight phases up to no good, flip my sugar groups in the ER met lumen. I got one little ER localization sequence cleaved, and my cell got scared and said, You're moving along the secretory pathway. I whistled for a vesicle, and when it came near, License plate said Golgi and had some proteins bound. If anything, I could say this vesicle was rare, but I thought, nah, forget it. You're homes to the secretory pathway. I pulled up to the Golgi, and on the cis side, I yelled to the vesicle, smell you later, remove my manuses, and I was finally there to sit on my throne as a glycosylated protein. Story time! Tell us how it all starts! Proteins like my buddy here have ER localization sequences that direct their ribosomes into the ER. Then we get translated through the ER membrane. Precursors begin synthesis in the cytosol and then are flipped by flippases into the ER lumen. For example, connectin's glycophosphatidinol anchor begins synthesis in the cytosol but then is flipped into the lumen. How do sugars form on the ER membrane for end link glycosylation? Sugars bind to dolichol phosphate, which is a highly hydrophobic lipid on the ER membrane. Once the inhibitory influence of tunamycin has been removed, Oh no, I'm being inhibited! Dolichol phosphate binds two glycnac groups. This is followed by the binding of five mannose groups. The first glycnac binding is a high energy pyrophosphate bo uh, bond, but the rest of the bonding is all glycosidic. After all of the first seven subunits have been bound, the precursor flips to the ER lumen. But why do they go to the ER lumen? After flipping, further processing occurs in the ER lumen. Four more mannoses and three glucose are added to get the complete 14 residue precursor bound to dolichol phosphate. The complete precursor is ready for transfer by oligosaccharyl transferases to the proteins. This occurs co-translationally or post-translationally to the proteins in the ER lumen. For example, the C-terminal sequence of connectin is cleaved during translation, and the GPI anchor is added in the ER lumen. How do we know where the sugars will go? 
Specific glycogroups are associated with specific amino acid sequences. For example, N-linked glycosylation occurs at asparging residues. However, amino acid sequences alone aren't enough to tell where the sugar groups will go. Not all aspargines are glycosylated in N-linked glycosylation. Is that it? Not quite. Now we'll take a closer look at what goes in on inside of the ER lumen. The two phosphate groups have been removed from the precursor and it is attached to the protein. Now, two glucose residues and one mannose residue are removed in separately catalyzed reactions. This seems awful complicated. Won't things go wrong? There is a system in place to deal with improperly synthesized proteins. In the ER lumen, this glycoprotein is held by the CNX-CRT protein complex, while heat shock proteins engage in folding. Glycoproteins such as this one that cannot fold are retained in the ER for a longer period of time, and are trimmed by mannosidase 1. If this trimmed version is recognized by OS9, the misfolded protein will be moved out of the ER and into the cytosol so it may be ubiquitinated and then degraded in the proteasome. Are all glycosylated proteins located in the ER lumen? Whoa, 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 hold up. Were you even listening to my song? They are then excreted in vesicles to the Golgi for further processing. What happens in this mysterious Golgi? In the Golgi, sugar transferases strip many of the mannoses and move phosphates to give a final glycosylated product. So, all of the glycosylated proteins are located in the trans-Golgi? No. From the trans-Golgi, they can follow pathways to a variety of cellular destinations. For example, my buddy Connectin follows the secretory pathway. Its GPI anchor links to the exterior of the cell membrane where it acts as a cellular adhesion molecule. Thanks, Connectin. But why should I care about one lousy cellular adhesion molecule? Whoa, don't be dissing my buddy Connectin. Connectin is a highly conserved protein in everything from drosophilia to humans. Its homophilic binding guides the axons of motor neurons along a path of connecting expressing cells to the connectin expressing muscle and allows it to form a synapse that allows movement. If you don't have it, you will experience motor defects and defects in axon pathfinding. Its expression is carefully controlled by Hox genes. Inappropriate expression results in motor neurons going to the incorrect muscles. Check it out. Glycosylation is sort of a big deal. Well, that's it, y'all. Catch you later.